beautiful morning. The motivation is high. I'll be leaving this area. Uh, I have been back here three days. Let's see. One, two, three nights. Day four back here, and I haven't seen anyone. It's like a miracle. I came down to this parking area at the trailhead thinking I'd have to strategically put my tent somewhere and then I realized dude, no one's coming back here really super quiet uh, I'm gonna go north and then come back up into this mountain range I think uh, there's another access point to that crest trail that might be worth checking out. I have a plan to get my power-up package in uh, Austin, which is within, uh, you know, a couple hour drive. But that's not going to be until Tuesday. That's when the post office reopens. Memorial Day is tomorrow. There's more to say. So it's it's day seven. I've been out in this tent six nights on the motorcycle camping. I don't feel dirty. I was able to wash up in the creek a couple days ago. And what I'm thinking is spending another two nights in the forest and then going to Austin. Hopefully there's a motel there. I can wash up. I charge my batteries there. I hopefully wash my clothes and uh, swap out the power up supplies and uh, definitely have a box to send away. Uh, one thing that happened last night, I'd gone, I'd gone down the road a bit just to look at this ridge here and uh, heard some interesting bird songs. So I was trying to get closer to the birds to, to film and record their sounds. And I was sitting on this slope, no, oh, probably 50 yards, 40 yards from the road and uh, real quiet. And damn it, I moved to look at something and an animal snorted. All right, it was coming up the road and saw my head move. And at first I thought it was a bear and I'm glad it wasn't. It was a big four-legged um, mule deer because it was gray. All I could see was that it took off and uh, had a bunch of trees in the, in the way. But it kept snorting like five or six more times. So it was either a mule deer or a bighorn sheep. And regardless, it, the, the snorts were big and deep. It was a big animal. And darn it, it was so close that it was just going to walk right in front of me. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm on the road. And uh, I'm back up into the mountains on the, the south side. Uh, the motorcycle is still leaking right here. And this is what I'm reduced to wearing. This crappy thing on my leg. Uh, I can only imagine that it's working to keep all that shit off of my boot. Uh, it, it went down a little bit. I need to make sure it stays up. You know, but right now it's it's better than it was. Getting all that stuff on my boot and my pants and my socks. I've got one more thing to try and, and it's called JB Weld. Just to try to put it around there. The super glue just like melted off or, or corroded off or something. It didn't work. But here it is in the pass, the crest 
trail pass. I'm not going to leave my motorcycle. I'm going to look for someplace else to camp. Basically, I just wanted to find kind of a chill place for a couple nights. But what, uh, what we observed on this uh, Memorial Day weekend was probably about 200 of these big, you know, four-wheel uh, dune buggies. There's like a convention down there. And I, I want to get away from that. This is my zone. It's a good one. You see? There's grass. It's nice. And there's my shade. I guess the tent's going to go here somehow. Crazy thing happened. I relocated. I heard that there were uh, streams. This whole little field here is uh, rivulets of water coming down. So there's fresh water here. That's a bonus. And I couldn't handle any more of those, those buggies playing that hip hop country music. I mean, I could almost hear the lyrics from like 200 yards away. All right, this is my prototype, what I'm calling Frankenfoot. And it really, it really feels weird to wear it. It's like I have to, it's like I almost have to limp. Okay, so this one is, it's done. I can't do anything more with it. It's too bad. The lady at the gas station gave me this orange tape. Um, the next one. Oh, crap. Look at this. So, the next one, I'll have more tape. And, uh, damn it, I washed my hands. I hate this stuff. Okay. Frankenfoot sucks. I hope the JB Weld works. Good morning. Uh, this is Monday, Memorial Day, the last day of May. It's day eight of my journey. Outside of suffering through life, things are great. Uh, lots of bird activity in here. It was a great idea to come up here. There are uh, 
chuckers, groups of chuckers in here. Clucking like chickens. <clears throat> the birds are coming right in this rose shrub area and singing. I also heard this uh, this this night hawk, which is the only thing I could think. Again, last night here, just one, and he would start his, and it would be so soothing. I just can't tell you. But then he would stop before I could fall asleep. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Packing up here and was thinking about a couple of things yesterday when I was passing through the throngs of, you know, holiday picnickers, uh, dune buggy riders and stuff. There was a, you know, a great sense of like just social camaraderie. Hey man, how's it going, man? This beautiful day, we're all happy to be out and having a good time so that was kind of a good feeling and uh, almost like a, kind of a renaissance flavor from like past past times it's, it's hard to imagine I didn't see one COVID mask anywhere in the bunch Good boy, I know it's bad. Look at you. Look, you want to be in the movie? He's a good boy. Look at him. Look at him. He looks like my old buddy Spaz. Hey, Spaz, is that you? Okay. That is where I will sleep tonight. Yes, sirree. Here we are. This is uh, room number 10. And I can't say how excited I am to be nice and clean. So fresh and so clean. My got, I got my laundry done. Look here. I got me some Ipa. I got me some I I burrito. And so, this is a uh, Frankenfoot version two.
My boot goes right in this <laughs> protective canopy. It's not a canopy, it's a bag, right? The other super bonus is that uh, at the laundromat, I met this guy, and he had some JB Weld, like, in his rig. So I brought it up, and I JB Welded around that bolt that leaks oil. I'm hoping it holds. Uh, we'll see. If not, I have the Franken boot. Okay. Good times. It's time to relax. Well, I'm about uh, 70 miles from the uh, motel, heading north towards Battle Mountain, and uh, it's 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 becoming hard pressed to find trees for shade. And this is just right, perfect right here. Kind of got a, a circle of these trees here. And I'll probably put the tent here. This was about a seven mile, eight mile excursion from the, the highway. And it's getting warm. However, there's a very nice breeze. Okay, so this this canyon here is just chock full of trees. And I'm just gonna go to the top here, take a peek around. And it just keeps on rolling here in this larger scale valley. And there's supposedly a reservoir farther back, maybe another 12 miles, if I just said that or not, but it's probably back by those mountains. Here's something that's really great news. I hope it stays that way. Here's my, my JB Weld. I think it's gonna hold. It's, it's like a miracle. So that's great news. It's not splattering oil on my boot. And I cleaned my pants up really good there at the laundromat. Got some dish soap and just scrubbed it really good. And then washed all my clothes. I got my power up package at the post office. Sent some things away. Okay, so I'm sitting here Trying to figure out which direction the sun is going to set because I kind of got turned around in this canyon, twisted and things. So this is what I did. I I set a stick here to cast a shadow, and I put a stick, you know, in the shadow's path. And so, you know, I'll let some time pass to see where that shadow goes, and I'll have a better idea which way that sun is heading which would be west and mostly I just kind of wanted to gauge where the shade was going to be for the rest of the day and I'm going to be good right here so I'm looking at my notes and uh, kind of forgot I had these this is uh, just some brief notes about my power-up packages this was the one I picked up today, no book, but then I'm getting a book in five days, so I'll be all right. There he is. And they're fast, they'll hop, they're pretty big. Well, I had one by my tent and I was walking along, it stopped, and I said, hey, what are you doing there? And he turned and looked. 
I'm serious, they can hear it. And he looked at me, turned around and ran away. <laughs> and these things are all over the highways and they're all, it's like the hatch of these things. And they make, I think they make a little kind of cricket noise when, a squeak when, when you, they're threatened. Look, I knew they'd come around when I went away. Now there's one in here. He's like upside down looking at me. Kind of creepy. Yeah. Super, super warm, and all I can do is just hide out in my tent. But it's got to be above 90 here. The breeze, when it happens, is nice. A few more hours of the sunlight. Not much else to do. I, I'm just trying to conserve energy and keep my water intake down. comes that sun. Yeah, better. It's the, the cue to start packing. It was pretty dismal yesterday with that heat. It was sweaty around my neck, my legs, my special area, yeah. took me back to the bicycle trip through the Midwest in July. So it's going to be another day like that, hot. I'll need to find some trees. I've got a place I'm looking at about 70 miles from here. I'll have to get on uh, Interstate 80 today for about 35 miles. And yesterday afternoon, right up in here, I don't know what it was, but it had this sort of exhale, oh, like this. <laughs> and it, I was in the tent, and I'm like, damn. I mean, I could tell it was in the tree, but it sounded like a bear or something, right? So I go over there, I look around, I don't see anything, I don't hear or see anything fly. And then I come back, and it happens in one of these two farther trees. And again, I don't see anything move or fly. And then again, it was distant, probably like 40 yards out there in those other trees. And then I heard subsequent, like, branch moving and stuff. So, hey... I think it was an owl, mostly because, again, after that, a good 80 yards, 100 yards, an owl started hooting. The stay, this last uh, motel stay, was 80 bucks, kind of pricey, but monopolistic there in that little town of nothing on Highway 50. And there's, there's something weird that happens in at least my mind. Uh, when I go into a place like that, even though it was small, it was nice and clean. There's this sense of like strong desire to the fucking to stay there and enjoy the amenities of human life.
you know, society. But then I come back out here, you know, this is my zone. It, it's great. I come back out here. Look, there's no one out here seven miles into the desert. 